What? Oh, hello everyone. Can you guys hear me? I can't believe I did it early this morning. Hello. Let's see what's going on here. Why that didn't show up. It's a lighthouse. Oh, you guys found a... Oh! You know what? I just realized. Oh. Here is the... You know what? You guys are right. Sorry, I forgot to post the picture. All right, here it comes. Let's see here. You know, I put that, I put the YouTube, what was the week's motivation I checked? Yeah, I'm so sorry. Can you guys hear me right now? I'm, I think you can hear me. I'm sure you can. Give me a, give me an okay if you can hear me. Uh, let's see here, live stream. Totally. There it is. Okay, and I'm going to mark this as an announcement. Mark as an announcement. Forgot to post the picture. Okay, check on. I I just posted it on Facebook, so you guys should be able to see it. It's this little. It's the. Uh, oh, excellent! Y'all can hear me. All right, so it's the. Uh, it's this uh, lighthouse picture. So um, I just posted it just now on Facebook. You know what? I I had it set up in the uh, I had it set up in the YouTube thumbnail for this, but I forgot to actually post it. If that happens again, somebody shoot me a message or something. Hey, where's the Monday picture? I I usually have them ready first thing in the morning. So my bad. <laughs> Anyways, okay, enough of that. Uh, my name is Kurt Asplin, and I'm a dad who loves to draw, and this is our Monday night live draw session. Hello, everyone. Uh, tonight, what we do on Mondays in our Facebook group, we uh, I'll post a picture. It's our Monday challenge, and everyone kind of works on it throughout the week. I usually try to encourage people only to spend about a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes on it, but... Yeah, sometimes it goes longer or shorter. And then a couple weeks ago, uh, maybe it was, I think it was last week. Last week we decided to uh, start giving this as a demo uh, to sh kind of show you. I think our first one was the bridge. So this might be our second one. Anyways, um, so we got this going. Somebody posted, mm, Shelby, was it you that posted the interior of that room? I thought that was just wonderful. So we're gonna we're gonna draw that next week. That was that was a great post. I think it was you. Anyhow, so um, we got that. We're gonna start here in just a second. And uh, just a couple things. Um, we have a very active Facebook group. Uh, we I'll put a link in the description that you could join that. That's a great thing. Uh, this is uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, I've switched some things so that only subscribers can chat. You can still see it, but if you want to add to the chat, you do need to subscribe to it. And I think that's all the announcements. I do have... Okay, yes, yes, all right. We will get that interior shot next week, Shelby. Um, and then last, I, I've got this fantastic announcement that's coming. But we're... Uh, it's the seventh... We're going <laughs> to... You're going to have to wait till February 1st. I'm working really hard on something that is going to be awesome for everyone. I can't wait. So uh, uh, some of you have already given me some ideas secretly, but uh, um, we'll, we're going to make these things happen. I was already thinking down this line. I know um, it's all in mystery right now, but that's the way we roll. I want to keep a little mystery out there. <laughs> so anyhow, um, we got that going. Uh, and then one last thing. I did mention in Facebook group that tonight at 8 o'clock in one hour, 
Uh, we have some, I have some, a teacher, fr some friends in Phil the Philippines who've asked me to do a live Q&A and another drawing session from eight until nine. There is a link for that. Once this is over, uh, you should be able to see it. I put a link in the Facebook group. I do have Facebook open here to my right. So if you uh, give us a hint, <laughs> oh, let's just say, Danielle, it involves uh, the internet. <laughs> so how about that? All right, it's coming though. You're gonna love it. Oh, you're gonna love it. So anyways, if you want to, once this is over eight o'clock, um, I will start that other live stream. And I think I could show it to you what we're gonna draw. Not only will we be, well, I'd be answering questions from them, but uh, my friend who lives in the Philippines, uh, let me turn this camera just a little bit. There it is. Um, my friend who lives in the Philippines on his walk this morning took a picture of this cow. So we're going to draw this. Um, I'm going to draw this. So, okay, great. So anyways, that's, that's coming up next. And I have no idea what they're going to ask, but it should be, it should be fun. So... Anyways, um, okay, that's it. I think we could get started. Tonight we're going to um, draw our, uh, our lighthouse here. So let's, uh, let's talk about something first to um, kind of get us, get us in the mood here. Uh, let's talk about landscapes. And I want to talk about the difference between a horizon line and your eye line. There's, there's a big difference, and I don't want you to overthink this. I just want you to be aware of it because both your eye line and the horizon line get involved in perspective, and when we start talking about perspective, it could get very confusing really fast, and you know me, I like to keep it as simple as possible. I like to take this information and simplify it, So, but... I do want to make you aware because it comes into play with what we're doing on this drawing just a little bit. All right. So just you could take some notes as you see what I'm doing here. So let's just let's just say this is my uh, now. Why is that not showing up? Can you all see that square I just drew? Uh huh. I don't see it on the screen over there. Hmm. All right, let's see what's happening here. Oh, I know what's going on. Hold on. We had this problem last week. This app just shut down on me. All right, there we go. Okay, now we're good. Sorry about that. I'm going to have to keep my eye on that one. Okay, so we're talking about uh, the difference between the eye line and the horizon line. So let's talk about the easy thing first, okay? Uh, the horizon line. We all know we all know what the horizon line is. <coughs> uh, no, no, no. All right, so the horizon line is where like the ocean comes right into our sky. okay? We got that. Do you have a, yes, this time I do have, I did make sure, Danielle, I charged up my pen. So you are right. <laughs> so um, we got a horizon line. <clears throat> if, if you think of, if you think of the ocean, let's just say I'm standing right here. Just bear with me on this, okay? And I'm standing at the ocean's edge and I'm watching out at the horizon line. And this is the ocean. Okay, and I'm, I'm looking out at the horizon line, boom. So the horizon line and my eye line are identical. They're looking, they're looking right on top of each other. But now let's just say I climbed up a giant building or I was on top of a mountain and I'm looking parallel with the ocean. Well, in that case, uh, my eye line might be up here, where the horizon line, horizon, or oops, horizon line is down below me. Okay, if 
if a building if a building is on the ocean on the top of the ocean its vanishing point is going to be on the horizon line so let's just say and just just hear me out on this let's just say this is my building and the foundation is on right on top of the ocean it's gonna it's going to go back to the vanishing point let's just say it's right there but now if I was to take that building right up to where my eyes are, it's quite possible that that building uh, would now, uh, the vanishing point would be along where my eye line is, okay? So when we say, when we talk about horizon lines or vanishing points, uh, we definitely have to take into account uh, where our eye line is, okay? So my eye line, just to, just to be clear, we, we're all talking about the same thing here. My eye line is right, right along the line, the level plane field where my eyes would be. It'd be like this, okay? So it's possible to have two different vanishing points depending on where the object is located. I just want you to be aware of that. If you don't understand it, no worries. Because in this case, we are looking at this lighthouse and we are up higher on a little bit of a mountain so it's gonna it's gonna change things ever so slightly okay but it's so subtle that we won't even notice it just something to think about all right enough of that that was our that was our classroom study <laughs> for the night so let's clear this out and we're looking good there okay let's get started Okay, so whenever I am uh, drawing a scene, an object, or uh, an animal or something like that, anything, I always go through these three steps. It's gesture, construction, and then detail. And each one of those gets progressively darker on my page. So my, my gesture, if, I, if I'm going to do all three, my gesture is going to be very light. It's just going to give me a light feel for what I'm doing. Then I'm going to do my construction, and then I'm going to drop in my detail. Okay, and that's, that is the process that, uh, that I usually go with. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with that. All right. I also notice a lot of times in the Facebook group, a lot of people like to draw to the very edge of their sketchbook. And I usually like to put some type of border on my paper. That It's it's helpful in measurement, figuring out the proportion. It also gives me a little bit of breathing room around my picture. So I always try and, generally speaking, will use a uh, some type of box uh, in the proportion of my photo that I'm gonna use. All right, so as I'm looking at this, let's go ahead and quickly gesture it. First thing I see is like that horizon line is coming up here. I'm gonna kind of quickly drop that in. Then, then let me show you a couple things here. You know what? I could just stay on this page. I think I'm looking at I'm looking at this shape. Oops. I'm looking at this shape here. Because I'm going to use shapes also to help me uh, figure out, get the right proportion. So I'm looking at negative shape. There's another great shape on the other side here. All right, I can see that uh, down below here, I have a nice shape. And then I have my mountain coming in here. My uh, top of this mountain is just below the horizon line. And my uh, lighthouse is just going right above it there. I'm going to race. I'm going to race this here because there's some hills and the there's some other little mountains or seashore in the
in the back here. So let's just quickly put that in. And I'm looking at relationships of where the end of that island is. Just keeping it light. This is below the horizon line. And then there's a larger hill, but going back here, this might be a cloud. But I'm going to assume it's another hill back in there. I've got a little something in the surf here that's coming down. And something over here. I've got a mountain edge. Coming around here with my uh, trail. Just without, just quickly dropping in like shapes shapes and fields of gesture so I get a sense of where things are going. You know, a real nice thing about drawing uh, landscapes is that um, you don't have to be completely accurate. Unlike if you were drawing a human face or an animal or something like that. Animals, there's a lot of leeway too. But uh, when it comes to drawing portraits, there is... Uh, there is no room for error. And, uh, you know, just on that note, I've drawn a lot of portraits in my life that uh, never saw the light of day. And that's okay. Because you're going to have to go through that period of, of drawing a lot of portraits that no one ever sees. Okay? All right. So, this is pretty good. This is essentially, I have my... Um, my gesture in. All right, let's go ahead and move up to now. Let's start thinking about some of our construction. So as I'm, I'm a, as I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this mountain, and I could see definitely uh, it has rocks that are showing. Um, so what I want to do is kind of approach it like this. I want to think of in my head of this idea of layering or overlap. It's like this. So A, B, C. So as I'm thinking of this, I am uh, <clears throat> I'm thinking of what object is in front of the next object. So as I'm looking at this hill, that's the first thing I'm going to start asking me is what rocks are in front of other rocks. So let's start with some of the rocks that are, let's start with this guy right here. He's, he's up front and center here. And then I have this rock coming in over here, which I've drawn nicely. And I'm going to, just so I can keep my, um, sense of what's coming or going. I'm going to add some surface lines straight up and down. And then there's a little bit of a hill there. And then there's a flat part right here on this rock. And also these. These are more cliff-like now. And again, I'm just dropping in starting to kind of get a closer sense of what's happening here. Uh, transitioning from gesture into construction. Adding some, help me adding some tone here. And I'm trying to think of what's going straight up and down. What is going, uh, what is going parallel. All right, so my lighthouse here is going to be like a cylinder, and I want to make sure it's subtle. Look, look how subtle that is. That definitely has a round. I'm looking up at it. All right, so we want to make sure that uh, we have a little bit of a round up there. And I've just noticed something. I've actually made my lighthouse way too big. Can you see that? 
but I'm going to um, I'm going to run with it. That is way too big. I'm just going to extend the cliff here because we can do that. All right, let's continue down here and get some more of these edges here. And if you have questions, by all means. So this whole cliff here, let's work on this cliff here. So this, this is coming down here, straight up and down. We're going to get our stairs in here in just a little bit. Okay, so the sand is coming up here. And, you know, drawing cliffs like this, there's no difference in literally drawing a waves in the ocean or even fur. It's a very complicated space. But we just got to slow down and start piecing it together. Now this, let me show you this here that I'm I'm looking at. I'm I'm looking at something like this right here. And in my mind, what I see is, I see this tone. I see this in here as, I see this in here as bright. Then it gets dark, and then it gets light, gets light again. All right. And so I want to be really. I want to be very closely aware of that as I start putting in some of my values and as I'm putting in other values as well. And I also noticed this whole this whole side of the mountain over here is all in tone. Not even get to, not even getting to detail yet. There is there is a little bit of light that is being captured right here. You see that? So I I want to make sure that I'm sensitive of that. And right now I've already put tone in, but you can make it pop by adding darker value on either side. Sometimes this the most little bit of value will really uh, really set this thing off. All right. I'm looking at this shape here. This is this is quite dark. Mountains coming down here. This is also very dark down here. Keep dropping in my tone a little bit darker and at this point all I'm doing is looking at value looking at value trying to determine where my darkest darks are this is aiding in the construction because I, I don't have a lot of uh, my only cylinder or I don't have a lot of geometric shapes so really I'm only dealing with more organic shapes so I just keep cross hatching and kind of bring it up more. I'm trying to really look at look at the picture with my eyes here to see what's going on. Look at this. Look at this little section here of 
of hill, of, of the cliffs. We are going from, uh, we have these the lights hitting these little edges here. See that? And then the rest of it's dark. So that's something that I definitely want to uh, be aware of. So once again, those little areas I want to uh, darken. And my little darken the areas around it. So my mine might not be exactly accurate the way that the picture is, but that's okay. I could still use what I got and just make sure that uh, we're getting that dark value in here. All right. I'm using some surface lines now to kind of indicate the uh, the slope here. Look, we have a we have this middle value here that's coming up the mountain. That's getting some light. Then I'm going to come down here, back into my cliff. Just looking at the different value changes. Taking a look at my picture now, one thing one thing I like to do is to uh, you can stand back from your picture and take a look at it. All right, I think that's that's getting some dimension there very carefully. I did notice. Look at this, my uh, my lighthouse here definitely has a. Uh, lighter side and a darker side all right I want to be respectful of that light hitting that mountain there all right I'm going to add some of these uh, steps going up here and I'm just going to use uh, horizontal lines I'm not worried if they're perfectly lined up because this is this is a long ways away Sometimes when I'm uh, putting it in tone, like right where it's light, I will add a uh, bit of an edge, darker edge. It's 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 this idea. Let me show you. When you when you have a ball that is going to be uh, shadowed per se, let's say this is in shadow here. A lot of times uh, this edge right here will be a little bit darker and and that's because of you get reflective light that's bouncing off the ground and hitting the underside and just that optical illusion will give a sense that that is uh, is really round so a lot of times when I am drawing something I like to use that same effect oops where right where uh, something comes in touch with something very light, um, I'll I'll try and darken that edge just a little just a little bit, and that adds a lot of uh, great contrast as well. Oops. 
how's everyone doing? Everyone doing okay? All right. No news is good news. I'm going to work on this little, uh, I'm just kind of looking very closely at this uh, cliff in the back here. And just kind of working in, I'm looking at it closely now. And look, looking carefully at the, some different value changes in it. This whole area should be in tone. And this guy needs to be in tone too. This guy's really dark over here. Trying to add some surface lines on this hill on the back side here. Boy, you know, you when you you just you just want to think that this is uh what's this complicated? It's not complicated, there's just a lot of interesting things going on. Alright, so coming these sidewalk this uh, sidewalk, these steps here get far more definition especially the ones down here and here's here's a little something that I just noticed look at look at this right here this is this is kind of nice so we what we have here is we have steps that are coming down but of course you've got this mountain here this part of the hill that's overlapping these steps that's something that we want to make sure we um, we show because that that gives depth and interest to what we're doing. So let's let me uh, get that in here. Yeah, that has a little bit of light too going on there. Let's darken this edge here where it comes in contact with the uh, light. All right, I'm, now I'm uh, squinting my eyes so I can break this, this, this mass up over here. I'll show you. This kind of bothers me here. This area here, you see that? That's just, that's just way, that's way too flat for me. All right. So let's let me look closely at my drawing here. And try and break that up. Just keep I keep looking at values and tones. Where's my lightest light? Where is my darkest dark? How's everyone doing? Everyone's good? No questions? I think this is coming out a little nice. I'm just looking at my drawing here. Okay, it looks like these, looks like my stairs. Look at the, look at the uh, 
Look how bright they are. Look at this. This little area here. I've just noticed how bright that is compared to uh, the brightest bright. Uh, compared to over here. These are, these are the things I'm looking at. Because right here, this is where, uh, that's where the sun is hitting it. That's going to be my brightest point on the mountain here. And, and my stairs, my stairs are way too bright. So we need to, I need to, I personally need to tone those back. Yours might be different. So I'm just going to drop a tone here. All right, that looks better. And this, there's this, uh, yeah, that's really dark. <clears throat> Okay, it's a much better tone now there. Squint my eyes again, looking at the, uh, what we got going here. Okay. Oh, this, this should be really dark in here. All right, I'm going to get this other hill here and now we're kind of coming in here. So why is it bad to draw to the edge of the um it's not bad per se. I mean because because of course Shelby, I've broken that rule many times. So let me let me show you. This is a good example. Uh Yeah. All right, so here's here's a good example. All right, so in this in this little drawing here, I was trying to think of a desert environment. So you could see I've kind of I have the edge of my picture right there, okay? But then in the next one Oh, here's another good example. Oh yeah. Okay, so here's some other examples of of environments or areas that I was trying some different photos out, trying different arrangements out, okay? Then you get to this. And this was drawn to the very edge. So your question is, why is it bad to draw to the edge? I think, I, you know, uh, I wouldn't say it's bad, but I just don't do it all the time. I just like to have that, that, that little bit of framework that I can work to where I know the end of my picture is. I'm sorry, that is so, so that is probably the worst answer I could possibly give it to you, but uh, I like a frame. I like seeing the edge of where my picture's going. Then I could, I mean, it gives you space to write some notes in the margins. It gives you space to frame it if you're ever going to come back and frame it. Um, you know, there's, so there's, there's, there's some very positives about it. Uh, so that's all I got to say on it. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry that doesn't, that doesn't answer your is it more of a style? Yeah, it might be more of a style thing. We'll we'll go with that. A total style thing. <laughs>
All right, let's keep going here. So I'm going to come back in here. Get this tone here of... I don't know, do you, do you like drawing to the edge? I mean, I'm open to have a conversation about it. All right, got some grass in here. And then also notice now, here's here's another example. Look, look at the, look at the tone. Look at the tone of the, of the sand here, the value compared to the value up there of what's in the, what's directly in the sun. And right now mine are identical. So I definitely want to uh, tone this back here. Another thing I noticed that I'm, it's not a mistake, I'm just, I'm just noticing in that same area that uh, my mountain, it's this, this concept, this idea, I'll show you. Sometimes you have a, you have a mountain there, a mountain there, mountain there, you know, and the, and the, and the ocean is, is coming up here. So this, this is totally going to give us, I like a border if, I, if I'm painting or using color. If I'm just sketching, I don't tend to worry about the border. All right, fair enough. In this idea here, this is the same thing as this A, B, and C. This is in front, B is behind, C is further. So we can actually um, take a look at that because that's actually happening, happening here. We have this edge coming down. There you go. All right. And I'm going to add a little bit more right here help talk about that just a bit all right I think that looks pretty good there all right let's get some of these let's get some of these rocks in the distance here and since they are really far back, and it looks like they are they are in uh, shadow. They're on the shot. We're looking at those on the shadow side. They're going to be more silhouettes than anything. Flat on the bottom because the water is coming up on them. And I want to be very. careful you know especially this this bigger one here uh, this this big this bigger one here because the one thing we don't the one thing we don't want to do when we're drawing these things is to have everything perfectly even so our brain and usually th this is what we end up doing so we want to be very very careful so with the rocks we want to make one a little bit larger and then a bigger okay this gives variety of course and i'm going to squint my eyes and just get an idea of uh, this ocean going back here as an overall tone I also notice you include your highlights early on. Is that just preference? I've seen a lot of people include highlights. I'm just curious. Oh, you know what's interesting? It's I'll tell you what's that's interesting that you notice that. Of course, I love I love to watercolor paint, and I've you know what you just you just brought something up, and I didn't I didn't realize I may be doing is, of course, when you watercolor 
you you can't um, you have to leave your highlights at the very beginning. So maybe maybe that's just the way that I, you know my mind is always working. I'm I'm thinking of I'm watercoloring, but I, I don't do a lot of it. But you know definitely when I am doing it, I'm like trying to uh, think as I'm going along. So if I was um, coming back into this to layer on top of it, I would do that. Um, now I'm working on a digital media, so it's very easy to do that, but I believe that most of you are not. So I want to give myself the same constraints that you guys have um, if you're just working with a pencil and stuff, uh, as opposed to me working on digital media where I could quickly make layers and everything like that. So, uh, great observation. All right, so let's, uh, we got our, got our highlights, got our ocean coming back there. I'm going to drop in these mountains now. Oh. Oh, where? So I typically try acrylic and tend to start with my shadows and lid. Yep, yep. Yeah, with acrylic, acrylic's awesome. You can, uh, like you said, you can uh, uh, layer. I mean, that, that's total, that's, you're, you're right on the mark there. So, I, I think in this case, I'm just thinking of, uh, you know, if, if you're using your, if you're using a pencil, you don't have the luxury of, of drawing on top of whatever you are working on. So, uh, that always isn't, you don't, you don't have that opportunity as much. So, but, uh, that is, each medium, of course, has its has its advantages, right? Oh, I'm just dropping in some tone for the sky here. And, oh, that was too dark. These clouds are pretty wispy. So I'm just gonna kind of gesture them in here. And then I'm gonna go in and add some waves here. And when I'm, when I'm putting these waves in, I'm just, I'm kind of like pushing down and pulling up pushing down and pulling up. Of course they're in the distance, but uh, I, I think if I use this motion, I can uh, get a good feel for them. Now, I've made my lighthouse too dark, but what I'm going to do to try and get that to uh, to read a little bit underneath there, even though that's not in my, even though that's not in the photo there, 
this will help to make my uh, lighthouse definitely uh, more contrasty and have a lot more value to it. How's everyone doing? Everyone doing okay? Looking at my, I could see my screen on another monitor here. It gives me a good view. I'm going to add a dark, dark shape up here in the bottom right just to almost as if something's in the foreground, rocks are in the foreground here. <clears throat> All right. Uh, anything else I want to do to this before we finish up? It's... 10 to 8, we're going to start that, I'm going to start that other broadcast here in just a second. Hmm. Do you have videos around color theory by chance? Uh, not yet. Not yet. But I think those are coming. <laughs> there's, a, there's a hint for you, Danielle. I think those are coming. Uh, what can I say about color theory? Well, I will say this. I'll, I'll say two things in the next couple minutes here. Um, remember, remember this. This is important. Every color, every color has a corresponding gray value. Okay? Every color has a corresponding gray value. If you get your if you get your values right, you could pretty much use whatever color system you want and it's going to look good. It's the problem happens is when people don't get their values right, uh, then their colors look all over the place. And so it's really difficult to actually like to look at a color and go, oh, I know what value that is. Um, that's not easily done, but you can start looking, the more you're looking at color all the time, you could start determining, oh, that color's really bright, or that has a very bright value to it. Oh, that one's, that one's less than. That is a darker value to it. So you can start playing with things of that sort. So that's, that's, one, I, that's one thing to think about. Um, here's here's a fun little here's a fun little trick that um, uh, that you I bet you know you may have known this um, the source of light let's just say we have sun up here the sun is like a yellow color okay whatever the source is the shadow it produces let's say we have a cylinder here and it's going to produce a shadow that shadow is the opposite of the light source. Okay? That's something, that's why on, and you could see this perfectly right now. Oh, okay, so basically lighter to darker tones. Sure. So, so if you, next time it snows, if you're in an area where there's snow, look outside when it's a bright sunny day, look at the shadow, and it's going to be blue. I guarantee it. It will be blue. It won't be gray. So whenever you whenever you are painting any type of uh, of shadows, you want to ask yourself what's the light source. Typically, it's always going to be the yellow sun, but sometimes if it's a red from a red light or a red reflection, um, sometimes the shadow will shift a little bit to green because the the shadow is always opposite 
to its life source. So that's my number two color theory uh, thing to think about. Mm. And uh, uh, I had another one in my mind, but I can't think of it right now. <laughs> I had I had two, and then I thought of the the sunlight thing in the shadow, and then I forgot the other one. So, well, we're just gonna have to try and remember that next time. Anyways, it's five to eight. Uh, we need to wrap this up. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. I will post this later this evening uh, so that you could watch a rebroadcast. And uh, that's it. Um, post your work in the Facebook group. I would love to see it. And that's all I got. Okay? Let's see. It, oh, if it's a campfire, light may be orange. but Yes. True. Yep, yep. They're going to be opposite. They're always going to be opposite. The, the val It's going to get darker in value, but it's still going to retain the, the opposite in color. So, anyhow. Uh, if you if you have a red if you have a red light uh, a light bulb that's red it's an awesome fun thing to do is to put a stick there and watch it watch it have a little bit of a green cast to it all right that's it I will see you whoever's gonna stick around I'll start the next broadcast here in just about four minutes okay everyone thank you for watching we'll see you later bye bye.